Should the Saints sign DeAndre Hopkins or trade for Hunter Renfro? Why are the Saints hanging out with John Gruden? Plus, patrons have sent something foul for me to drink. Thomas, hit that intro. Welcome to the award-winning Saints Happy Hour podcast. Seriously, this podcast has won awards. American standards are dropping every day. The show features Ralph, the best host in the world, who can barely pronounce his own name, much less anyone else's. Marcus Colson, Colston, I mean, uh, Marcus Calloway. Dave is that dude who loves taking bathroom breaks. He's mad about almost anything, so make sure to lower your volume when he speaks. Put that freaking clown meme back up that I made. Jesus Christ. Andrew has sources, watches tapes, and knows football. He rarely shows up on time and wants to commit crimes to help the Saints win. Sean Payton would have done illegal things. Don't tell me I'm wrong, because you know it's true. Oh, and there's also Kevin, who is great at doing mock drafts, but struggles to actually watch Saints games or have a functioning relationship. Budrich wants to know how uh, the doctor's doing. That that ended. Anyway, grab a drink, sit back, and enjoy the insanity. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour Podcast. We are live on Twitch. If you aren't, follow us on Twitch and remember to subscribe to Saints Happy Hour wherever you get your podcasts. Smash that like button on YouTube. Also, become an annual patron at patreon.com slash Saints Happy Hour and get two months for free. Annual patrons get a special welcome gift of our Saints Season Survival Mug. Get one before they run out. Um, Our off-season MVP contest is underway. Have you ever wanted to be on the main show and tell Kevin to shut up? Or enjoy Dave going to the bathroom, not tonight because he's not here. He's on a bougie vacation. Or talk grill Andrew about his sources, not tonight because he's on a bougie vacation. Uh, Now you can. Uh, The person who donates the most each week gets entered into our drawing to sit with us on the main show. If we reach $100 in donations tonight, the MVP will choose which mini bar bottle from my gigantic mini bar booze collection, I'm going to poison myself with. Pick your poison. Uh, some of them are 20 years old. Uh, and here's the thing. Uh, listeners have sent me stuff to drink. Nikolai was nice enough. He sent me, Kevin, I'm not going to lie. My liver died five years ago. But these things that Nikolai has sent me that I'm going to drink one of them if you people donate $100, they scare me. Coomerling, I don't know what it looks like. It looks you got to hold that up higher. It it, it 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 looks foul. Uh it, it just it looks it foul. German. Now, th- it's German. German. It's German. This one really scares me. It's called Underberg and it has a warning on it. Do not sip. Drink oh, all at once. Strong odor, taste can upset people. Take after a full meal. Um and it's used for flavoring. This one really scares me. I, I, I'm, I'm like legitimately frightened um, to take it. Uh, Kevin, you should be, man. besides eating a salad, what are you, uh, what are you drinking tonight? Okay, I'm drinking, uh, I'm drinking water this evening. Uh, I did have some, uh, some booze over the weekend. Uh, I just had like a. Yeah, like a, a margarita of some. I can't remember what the flavoring was, but I went to a Mexican place on a date over the weekend and had a margarita. Excuse me, and that was fine. You know, I try not to have the booze in the house for right now. Just if I go out, <laughs> there you go. I'll have one. And that's it. It's just a nice little I- demonstration of willpower f- to myself. That it's like, yeah, I don't need to have it in the house, even though I only have it. You know, I have one drink. It's just good to not have it in the house sometimes. I got rip. I'm drinking. I'm drinking Miller Miller High Life champagne. Of of course, the champagne of beers. Champagne of beers. I got rip roaring drunk at my brother's house Sunday, celebrating Everton another year in the Premier League. Woohoo! Avoiding relegation Sunday morning. So I got rip roaring drunk by my brother's pool. But I had relatives giving me crap because I was just drinking Bud Light Lime like it was water. Some of my relatives, they have it out for Bud Light. I don't know. I didn't realize that they not only had it for all out for Bud Light, but they had it uh, apparently for all Bud Light themed products. So apparently I'm a communist now. I I like Bud Light Lime. I'm going to keep drinking it. I don't care. Um, 
I'll Welcome celebrate. to the party, Ralph. Apparently, we have pie that is equally distributed to all. <laughs> I want to say I want to say this too. Thanks to um to Bart. I met I he he saw me in the French Quarter. I was down in the French Quarter with my 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 wife and uh, uh, and my mom uh, Saturday. Uh, and he's a big he's a big fan uh, of the show. He saw he saw me, you know, because you can't miss me. I'm limping around the quarter. He saw me. He came up to me. And he said he's a huge fan of the show. And Kevin, I want to say he gave us a compliment about you. Bart said he loves the fact that you are now integrated into the daily podcast. That he likes that. Okay. But but he said, making it rain. He, he he said he finds it weird that you can make time for the daily podcast now. Are you also going to make time to watch the games in the fall? He asked me. Um. That depends on <laughs> when uh, certain games are airing. That depends if I'm working on Sundays. That depends if if the uh, if 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 the good ship uh, paid subscription uh, comes in for me in the fall that I can watch a game at work. That's right. You know, you gotta get, there's you gotta a get lot Kevin, of Kevin a, a YouTube stream, baby. If I'm currently at the job I'm at, I will be working on Sundays. Yeah. So if that's the case, I'm going to need the old script to be able to watch the games on this bad boy. <laughs> uh, if I have a different job, I'll probably be off on Sundays, and then, that, and then at least I won't be having to watch a game while at work. The, you know, life stuff. I'm boring you all. That's all. Yeah. That's what's going well, I mean, on. We, 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 people care about you. They, want you. they want you to be able to watch the games. Uh, Bart, it was, it was really nice meeting you. Thanks for... Thanks for uh... Bumping into me and shaking my hand, I appreciate. I appreciate. We appreciate all the fans. If you see, if you see me out and about anywhere in Houston or in New Orleans, and you see me limping around like I tend to do, and you want to say hello, say hello. I'll take a picture with you. I won't sign. I won't do autographs because my signature is not worth having. But if you want to say hi and take a picture, I'm always up to doing it. Um, do you okay, shake your good hand? hand. What's that? I did. did. You I shake, took did you shake your good hand? He shook my he he shook my good hand and he wanted to see my bad hand, which a lot of people do, which is which is kind of weird. They're like, I want to see the bad hand, <laughs> Jesus. like like, I, like I'm like I would fake a disability. I think <laughs> it's I think they just want to know if it's, it's not. I don't think I don't think that they think you're fa You've been faking this the entire time. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that they believe your hand is just some sort of like disaster zone. Oh, that's right. Like, and they want to see: goes. does it look like an adult? Right. Is it, it a human like hand, or is it a hand? club? Is it a hook? Right. That's all. I think that's. A, I think that's what it is. A, is it, is it a ribeye? Is it a ribeye steak on. uncooked? Right. right. So, Thomas, do we have a leader in the MVP race already? Oh. Yeah, already uh, tons of love. Tiger Saint won last week Dang. with more than eleven thousand bits. Wow, uh, getting there uh, oh. right now. Right now, uh, who Saints with uh, Twitch Prime mm. of uh, stream C Jade also who that golf? Uh, thanks for Twitch Prime. Budrich with uh, Thank a you, tier Budrich. one sub, and he said uh, Renfro Mania, and That's also right. Jason Champagne with tier one sub. Thanks, guys. Thanks for thanks for thanks for Butterich. I, I want to say I know it's kind of getting slow, so the Discord isn't. Oh, speaking isn't as hot. of speaking of which, Andrew's dad filling oh, in Andrew's for dad. his son, fifteen hundred bits. That's the, what I'm talking about. The huge inheritance is flowing my way. I want to thank Butterich. We had a great discussion about a Hunter Renfro in the Discord. Which, by the way, if you become a patron, you get access to the Discord. We're talking Saints all the time, and and that's going to kind of seep into the show tonight. It gave me some ideas. Um. So thanks for the thanks for the update. I want to remind everybody, anyone who donates any amount, they also get entered into a drawing to get one of our crude taste cups. And they're like really close to being disappeared because we've had three or four new signups. The cups are getting low. We're doing the t-shirt here. We're closing that out. Dave sent me a big box of t-shirts. I'm gonna get the t-shirts out to the t-shirt people. The one last t-shirt for thanking all those people for supporting us at that tier level. We're gonna have some really, we got some cool stuff. We got Thomas in the lab working on all kinds of stuff for uh, the late summer when training camp starts. So just be on the lookout, guys, for special things for patrons that are current and future ones. We got all kinds of stuff uh, ready for you. Um, so, Kevin, Saints news. 
OTA, they continue. They got, I saw Derek Carr looking good throwing the ball. People are excited about, um, you know, people are excited about the linebacker, Jackson. Um, you know, uh, we'll talk about Hunter Renfro in a bit. But the big, the big Saints news from OTA, and I took a double take. I thought it was maybe fake. They invited old John Gruden, the wow, man who did it off. All right. They, they did a, he did a racism way back when, got, got uh, fired. No, he, from did, the, he, did, he did a racism. Uh, actually, you know what? Keep going. I want to try and look up exactly what he did. He did a racism, did a, racism. a sexism, um, a, a transgenderism, like a transgenderism. He did all the... <laughs> He checked what? every box of like, I'm just going to be offensive. Ism. Every ism. That's right, Thomas. Every ism you can do. John Gruden did it in emails from a decade ago. Um, to be fair, an old white dude sending horribly inappropriate emails is not stunning. Um, so at first I was like, I was like, and it is, it's kind of, I'm kind of like, man, Saints, do you have to do this? Like, do you need to have Gruden in? Couldn't you just have him in on a Zoom? And he like it's kind of it's kind of icky and gross. But then here's the thing, Kevin. If the Saints start out 0 and 1 or 0 and 2, the the hashtag Fire Dennis Allen is going to reappear and rebloom like a flower in the springtime. Right. So like 90 percent of the fan base, maybe higher, last year either wanted Dennis Allen fired or wouldn't have cared if he was. Right. So with that as the backdrop to Dennis Allen, probably potentially coaching for his job, and we demand that he does anything to win, I can't really knock the man for being like, my job's on the line. I'm going to call the guy that got the best out of Derek Carr. Like, I don't like it, but, like, we'll fire him. We'll want him fired if he goes 0-2. I was one of the people that was that that wanted him fired last year. And listen, yeah. if he go if he starts the year zero and three or something, and the team doesn't look good, I'll sir, I'll 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 fly the flag again get to get his ass out of town. Here's the thing with this Gruden stuff. One, why would you bring? Why would you bring him? To New Orleans, to the facility. Why would you bring him in? If you wanted to talk to him, we got these right here. Zoom, we have these. Zoom They're it. everywhere. They're ubiquitous. You got right. Zoom. You know, that thing that you didn't use to interview Doug Peterson <laughs> or that thing you used to only interview <laughs> Doug Peterson when he was a candidate for the coach. You wouldn't bring him into the, to the damn building, but you, right. you, you're going to bring, bring a Gruden. John Gruden in. Good point. Good point. So, also, it's, it's like, what, you wanted his notes or you wanted his, like, scouting analysis? Here's the deal. You call somebody with Gruden and you say, here's, here's, here's the thing. We want his notes. We want his notes. Fax them over to us. <laughs> or put them in a PDF, you know, get, you know, oh, you don't know how to do a PDF? Contact a 10-year-old kid you know. Somebody's got a, everybody's got a 10-year-old, 12-year-old kid that they know that can, that can do that. So you do that. You are not coming to the facility. You are not coming to the facility. The guy screwed up and did some, said some bad shit. Terrible. And I get that it was 10 years ago, but it's like, my man, you were still a full-fledged adult 10 years ago or in 2011. You were like a full-fledged, you were an adult. You were a you Super Bowl winning age, coach in yeah. 2011. My only so, thing. So, so the whole, ah, it's a young person doing He's stupid shit. He's I get young. it. He's a young I 45. get that a lot of people say and have said or have done stupid stupid crap in the past i get that i really do but why what why when you're caught do you kind of do this non-apology do apology. this like ah 
not, you know, you 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 do like a, a half-assed apology, and then when people call you out on that kind of stuff, you get all defensive about it. It's like, my man, you're the one that screwed up. Here's you're the, the thing, one that though, screwed Kevin. up. And Here's and and like I I I get people, you know. Gruden wants to like claim, oh, this is like cancel culture out to get me. It's like, my man, you're the one that screwed up. Yeah, that's right. Here's you're the, the one thing, that though. screwed up. Here's the thing. I'm I'm literally giving all of you, all of you out there a blueprint. Uh I don't think cancel Solve culture exists. And I hate that we're <laughs> I hate that we have to have this discussion. I hate that we have to, that we have to have this discussion. And I blame the Saints for that. I blame Mickey for that. I blame DA for that. I blame shitty ass Pete Carmichael for that. And I blame but here's uh, the thing, the Kevin. for that. Because you didn't need to bring this guy in. But maybe, By bringing but this Kevin. guy in, you are now inviting extra criticism that you guys did not need before. I don't know. Like, was John, like, did John Gruden really have the secrets to unlocking <laughs> Derek Carr in the 5,000 yard season? Is it really that complicated? He's got the launch code. John Gruden He's got to come a in and, He's and got a deal briefcase with, that? with the launch codes for Derek Carr. Exactly. But here's this the thing, isn't Kevin. That. It's not that. It's football. You're telling me that you have <laughs> professionals in the building and they can't figure out how to make. Uh, Derek Carr really Hulk. good or to tap into his potential? That's nonsense. I do not believe that. I don't adhere to that. Here's the thing. When you screw up, and, 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 it's, and it's a thing is, did you really screw up? Yes, he did. It's you, you sincerely apologize. That's the other thing. A lot of people don't actually sincerely apologize. You apologize. You say, I screwed up. And I am going to take whatever punishment is handed down to me. I am going to learn from it. And I am going to, and I hope that I get a chance to demonstrate that I am not that person that I was saying that in 2011. And I hope that I get to prove that in the years and decades to come because that's not who I am. Or that's not who I am anymore. That's not who I want to be. That's not how I want to be remembered. And I'm going to move forward from this. And I'm going to and I'm going to demonstrate that you can be a better person about it. And then guess what? You have to just let whatever happens happens. You have, you have to. to start there. You have, you to, have start to with a real apology. You then have. And if the but, league says you're suspended, we can't have you around. Then you have to say, hey, okay, I get it. I get it. I I screwed up. I, it sucks. It sucks, but you know what? You screwed up. You screwed up. And here's the thing. I'm not saying, I'm not, call, I, I'm not calling for, I'm, not, I'm personally not calling for any kind of a boycott. I'm not saying people need to pick it or march or whatever. But when people point this out and say that it's stupid or that it's asinine or, or, or it's this or that, that's what's going to happen. If, if you look at this and say, hey, the Saints are just trying to do what they got to do to win, like you pointed out at the beginning, hey, DA may not be on the hot seat, yeah. but he's on the simmering seat. So he's trying to say, whatever we got to do to make this thing work, I'm going to do. Great. Okay. If that's your, if that's the lane you want to be in, that's fine. That's fine. But just understand that people are going to be pissed about this and they're going to call it out and say, man, that's pretty, that's pretty shitty. Yeah, and, and, I, and I go back to, I go back to the Adrian Peterson thing. Deshaun Watson too. No, I mean, oh, like well, they, and the Deshaun Watson, but the Deshaun Watson thing, it, it never, but it never, it never came but to here's fruition. The, Everybody was, you know, here, it, here, it all got riled up, and then and then he ended up going elsewhere. Well, here's the thing, but, though. But the Adrian Peterson thing is, I bolted. I got out. I, I walked That's away. True. And the funny thing is, by walking away, I kind of learned, hey, I like football a lot. I still do. But football yeah. don't mean that much to me. And, I say, and I've said this on this podcast before. I, I don't know which ones, but I know I've said it on this <laughs> podcast before. Is you want other podcasts? Ev Besides everybody, everybody has their own line. Everybody That's has funny. their own line. That's right. And whatever that is, 
whatever that is. And I've even brought up, I even brought up Junior Gallette in, in one of those previous examples. I said, you know, for me, the Junior Gallette swinging a fucking belt around like a lunatic on a beach, that wasn't a line for me. It wasn't. The Adrian Peterson thing was the line for me. Yeah. Maybe your line is something else. Yeah, and listen. And, 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 if, and if that line is crossed for you and you decide to stop watching, I do not begrudge that. If there's anybody that says, I, I, I want to stop watching because of this Gruden stuff, I will not begrudge you. I haven't seen that. I Just haven't like seen I, and, and I would not begrudge anybody that wants to, that does still watch. That just I, don't said, think, hey, I haven't seen anybody I'm saying they're not going to watch. I but I have seen people. On. I just want to watch what's on the field. That's it. I just want to watch what's people, on the field. We're rooting for laundry. That's, that's it. Right. I do think people, I do think people, they, like I said, Dennis Allen has very short rope, very short uh, grace period with the Saints. But I do think for some people, like his, his, his window of like a grace period got even shorter. You know, it's like, Buddy, I don't think you're a good coach, and you brought in Gruden. You really better win. You better start off now. One point that I want to make, though, Kevin, in defense of the Saints bringing in Gruden, are we sure that John Gruden knows how to use Zoom? Are we sure? I feel like there's a 50% chance that if they just tried to have John Gruden on Zoom, he would have been on Zoom, but, like, had a on Snapchat Skype. filter and like he'd on have been Skype. a cat. He'd have been a cat. Listen, or he'd have, listen he'd have, John Gruden <laughs> is not living in a in a two bedroom apartment uh, with with a with with a, a a damn Hewlett Packard with an old Hewlett Packard machine running on a fifty six six K modem. He's he's living pretty I, well. He can afford well, to I have do. somebody come in and either instruct him on how to use that or do that for him. Or he can just do it all by phone. AJ do it all Rochelle by says, phone, brother. AJ Rochelle says, Gruden brings us all the attention we do not want. I do <laughs> think it. this. That's it. I do think this, and I don't, I, and this is the final thing I'm going to say about it. I don't like the fact that John Gruden's rehabilitation tour, which is starting, I don't like that the first step or the first stop was the Saints. Like, I just, I don't like it. Like, but, I'm not, other, I'm going to keep watch, is, and I don't, don't, don't want to I just don't like it. I don't even know, I don't even know if I like calling it a rehabilitation tour, because I, I, I don't know. I, well, the I, thing I, is, they I, didn't, I, he didn't meet with the, Gruden didn't meet with the media. He didn't interview about it. He just came in and left. So, I mean, I don't know, like, that's a good point. I, I will I mean, say, it was just, I mean, it was, it, it's just, if you're going to try and do something like that, that, it, again, that needs to be a, f you have to, when, when you screw up like that, this rain. isn't, the, the screwing up is not up for, it, there, there's no, there's no gray area on that. It's just, he screwed up. So he has to take the full responsibility. He's got to take the full brunt of it. Yeah, and he has it. And, and he hasn't really but, now, but yeah, but I, I just like, here's the thing. Like, I, I don't like, this is a conversation. Like you said, like John, Gr like when was the last time people looked at Gruden and were like, that guy is an offensive genius. Like what the, the George W. Bush administration 20 so, years like, ago. I'm, I'm just not sure. Like the Saints, Dennis Allen today, he saw that they see great value in it. The players are, are all for it. Blah blah blah. Of course, he's going to say that. I just like, man. I think you. I think you. You. I think you bought a CD. I think you bought like a like a. I'm trying to think of a famous band. I, I think you bought like a like an Aerosmith CD from like 1999. Like I don't. I don't see. I don't see the value in this. Like. But um, the Saints are smarter than me at football, you know. Well, are we? Sh <clears throat> but but again, you are you are doing these things that call into question. Like it's it's it's. I'm I'm, I'm reading some of the comments now on the Twitch. It's like 
We're now having this this we're having a discussion stupid, of all the same horrible this stupid in the Twitch discussion. discussion. About all the same horrible. It's, this a, guy. it's a giant list. It's a giant list. Make it stop, like, Thomas. Of turn course, it off. It's horrible. Ton, the Saints there list is doing horrible stuff. things. Deshaun Watson, the Catholic Church, Junior Gallette. It's a whole thing. The, the list of horribles goes on and on. Right. It's, it, it, it's never ending. Make it stop. Why can't, can't Saints, why can't you go? Thomas, reset the Saints, the, the days to the Saints, since the Saints did something horrible. Set it back to zero. <laughs> why can't you just it's just annoying just not it's just horrible? annoying man. why can't you just make make good decisions saints make good life decisions um so uh thomas give us a donation update where are we i see the donations are coming in am i gonna be having to drink this foulness yeah, probably. We are at 5,500 bits, so more than halfway there. And the new right. donations, uh, thanks to Hatchet John for 1k bits, he said, can't make the whole show, but here's 1k hey, bits. John. And also thanks to Romeo, one year, T1 Twitch sub. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. And listen, you know, Nikolai is a great supporter of the show. We love Nikolai, and he sent me stuff. But DM me on Twitter. DM me in the Discord. Uh, send an email. Send, uh, Saints Happy Hour at Gmail. Send us an email. If you want to have me some, potentially drink something horrible on air, we'll get it. You, we'll figure out a way for you to ship it to me. And so if he, people donate $100, I'll drink yeah, it on let air. Me, let week. me get on there. Let me get on there <laughs> uh, about that. If we hit 10,000 bits... Might I sug I'm going to suggest. Oh, wow. Here we go. That the winner of that, t uh, that you do not select the one that advises Ralph not to sip. <laughs> uh, it was the second <laughs> one, I believe, right? Do not yeah. sip. There and I say, that, and I say that, I say that not because I am sympathetic to Ralph's liver. I say that because. I would prefer Ralph drink that when we have both Andrew and Andy. Dave here so they can properly react to Ralph's face once that hits his tongue and taste buds. Why would it says after a good it says after a good meal? I don't like German that could just people be marketing are, for all I know. German German people are weird. Um so look, we got the the groom thing out. Yeah, the they, way. Are. I, they are. I said that I did that oh, I let off the Hey. I let off with Gruden because <laughs> making it rain. Since Dave and 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 Andrew are on vacation, and it's me and Kevin, I had to set Kevin up the fastball, just let him wind him up, let him go with a good rant. Uh, and Gruden, like it just it makes me uncomfortable. So here's the thing: actual Saints news, Kevin. Should the Saints give DeAndre Hopkins, who got cut by Arizona last week, should they give him all their cap space, or should they trade for Hunter Renfro? Because they need they need a receiver. And I just look at it is the more I think about it, after having my Everton experience where their one guy who could score goals got injured, it wrecked their whole season. And I just worry about the Saints. If they don't have Michael Thomas, a contested catch guy, the guy who could pick up big third downs, you're going to have the same issues you had last year. They need a reliable tough receiver and i know renfro and hopkins aren't the same build but they are kind of similar in that contested catches third downs deandre hopkins is is is, is older now but what would you do kevin if, if you're the saints because now the saints they have 12 million in cap space so they could do it if they wanted to do hopkins they could trade for renfro they could absorb him redo his contract do a lower cap number which one if I said to you, you got to do one of them. You can't say, you can't say I'm going to wait until August. I'm going to see what's what with wide receiver. I'm going to see what's what with Michael Thomas. I'm going to tell you, you got to do one of them in June. Which one do you want to do? If you if you if you if you are the Saints and you are Mickey Loomis, you got to sign you got to sign or trade for one of them. Which one are you doing? I'm I'm mulling this over. It's just like it's because. There's a lot. I'm I'm just like looking up. Uh, I'm looking at news stories. There's a lot of places that think it's either going to be the Chiefs or the Bills. It's it's tough because I think 
One, if for the Saints to get Hopkins, they would have to pay him at the high end. Like he's not coming here right. on a discount, right? So they'd no. have to pay him like twenty and, and they 20. Can, and they can make that they can restructure. I mean, that's that's Mickey Loomis. Yeah, bread you can and restructure, butter. but do you, but do you want to like you're probably if if the Saints got Hopkins, they would probably have to guarantee him like two years, probably two years, like forty million dollars. And he's currently thirty one. Yeah. Or he'll cur- yeah, he's gonna turn thirty one soon. Renfro is I think twenty seven. The thing is the thing is I know you hate to do trades and you hate to burn assets, but I just look at Renfro and I just don't think he's gonna have much of a market. I think yeah. he'll have a market if they cut him and teams yeah. will be like, Hey, Hunter Renfro, we want you at like six seven million dollars. And I think he'll have a market there. But as far as like a trade market. I don't think he's going to get even what the Saints got for C.D. Deuce, which was what? The Saints got a fifth and they gave Philadelphia a six and a seven or something. Like, I don't think, like, the Saints, it's conceivable they'll get Hunter Renfro for a six or a seventh round pick, which to me is nothing. So, like, I, I just mean, if, if, you, make, if you made me, I'm going to make, make you make a choice. I'm going to tell you right now. If I'm the Saints and I have to go, I get Hunter Renfro, I'll just call the Raiders, give them a six-round pick, say, hey, look, we'll give you a six-round pick in 2024 or whatever, and redo his deal because his base salary will be like six and a half million. You extend him a little bit. I would do that just because I look at Hopkins and over 31, he's a very physical receiver. Yeah. He got suspended for the PEDs last year. Yeah. Right? And I know it's it's different players and everything, but man, my latest my latest experience with a Saints player coming off of PEDs is David Onyemata, and that man was never the same since he got off the juice. So if I'm the Saints, I'm calling up the Raiders and saying, "Hey, tough break with Jimmy Garoppolo." But anyway, by the way, you want a six round pick for Hunter Renfro? I, that's my that's what I would do. I would I would go Hunter Renfro. Instead of I agree with every, I agree with everything you're saying. I, I I can't. If if they end up getting Hopkins, I'll I'll fi- I'll mm. be excited about it. I'll find a way to be happy about yeah. it. But I, of the two, put me down for Hunter Renfro. He's younger. He's healthy. Uh, there's no yeah no uh, PED uh, stuff. Uh, in his past, that we have to worry yeah, about. Andrew's dad says Ren- Renfro is a better value. Plus, here's a good point that that Budrich made in the Discord today: was Hunter Renfro. He's got the connection with Derek Carr. It's a Correct. very similar. It's a very similar offense. That's why the Saints had Gruden. We discussed that earlier. And and like Hunter Renfro potentially can get up to speed very quickly in a way that maybe DeAndre Hopkins can't. Of course. DeAndre Hopkins selfishly would fire people the hell up and your, your get cat pe- disagrees, man. Your cat disagrees. She's got a she, she's wearing a Hunter Renfro jersey, which is weird. <laughs> um, um uh, and by the by the way, uh my I, I my wife was very upset with me uh about my wife. Her, her people for the behind the scenes podcast. They got a, they got a, they got a taste of her screaming at the Astros, screaming at me. She's a little uncomfortable with it. I told her she needs to come on the behind the scene podcast and just be like a co-host and just tell the people uh, all the things that I do that annoy her. Like today, Kevin, she bought me. Um, what do you what do you call it? floor pad? What do you call it? Uh, floor pads for your car. Like what do you call those? Yeah, something I don't, like that. Like, like place, not placemats. That's for a table. But like floor mats. She floor bought mats. me floor mats, and she put them on the trunk. She put them on the hood of my car, and I didn't see them. And I drove off, and they went flying in the neighborhood in the street. And <laughs> she was in such a, she was in such a rage over it. She went and searched for them, and found them, and brought them back, and rubbed it in my face. And we're like, I can't believe you didn't see the goddamn floor mats on the hood of your car so just a little Jeez. just a little behind it's 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 may we got a behind the scenes thing so so in the chat i'm curious uh jason champagne says hopkins always seems to end up on my fantasy team and i have the best lifetime record in my family league uh 
Jason Champagne, if the Saints get Hopkins, I'll draft him and I will ruin him. I will ruin that for you because everybody knows Saints <laughs> player. Saints player, I get him on fantasy. They're ruined. Um, I ha- I've had people already reach out to me and tell me, don't you dare draft Derek Carr, you crippled son of a bitch. <laughs> I think Thomas. I think I'm going to make you run the. I'm going to make you run the Saints Happy Hour Fantasy Leagues this year. I'm going to put that on oh, your, your. I'm going to put that on your job duties. Um. So, uh, th- Thomas, give us a give us a uh, give us a donation update. Where are we? We are four K bits away from uh, Ralph poisoning himself Get it done. again. Come on, people! For Get two straight weeks, we had one new Get donation. Chad M gifted a T one sub to Jerry, who's always in the chat. Shout out to him! Thanks, what, guys. I wonder what will. Uh, Mr. Juge says the, the Ralph fantasy stink. Kevin, I wonder what will stink worse: my fantasy stink or Coomerling. I wonder what will smell worse: <laughs> Coomerling. I, you know, oh, here's the thing. I want people. I want people to know. I want people to know this. If I die because of this, Nikolai is to blame, and all your podcast dreams, your community goes up in flames because Nikolai poisoned me with some sort of German concoction. Um, <laughs> I wonder if I wonder. I, I can, never Kevin, trust this, the doctor, man. Never trust the doctor. Is, is did Hitler drink? Am I going to get canceled for this? Like, is, is somebody going to say I, Ralph was I, drinking the drink that Hitler drank? I would avoid. I would avoid mentioning that name. And you've done it Hitler. twice now. Um, I just. I don't want to get canceled. Well, I, I. I don't think that's possible. Um, yeah, we don't want to get banned, I, I, man. I don't think you can you get canceled. Get yeah, no. Hey, I, you know what? Don't. I'm not going to say that joke because then I'll get shit. Um, no, Andrew's dad said Hitler did not drink, so that's good. Allegedly. Good for me, not for Hitler. Maybe if he had drank, he'd have been a better person. Uh, October says Jaeger is more German. So we'll see. We're 4K bits. That's, what is that? What is that like? Is that like... That's not oh, that with 3,000 bits. 3K, 3K now. 3, AJ Rochelle bits, right. just donated 1K bits. Thanks, man. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Chad says Ralph could drink eight of these. I don't know. I don't know, Chad. This, these, these, like, really, like, like the 20-year-old stuff that my wife has, like, I'm not afraid of it. Like, it's old, even though it's, it's, some of it has, like, stuff floating in it. I'm just not, I'm just not afraid of it. But these things, like, like, I know Nikolai has, he, he probably has purposely picked these out to make me want to vomit and that it's it scares me because nikolai brews his own beer and he's sort of an expert so like he might be like a booze scientist he knows the right concoction to make it happen um so i could agree with chad chad says uh (laughs) jason says ralph's drink has floaters it's true but kevin here's a question for you as we wait for people to, to get this over the line if the Saints don't make a receiver move and they don't like Hopkins is kind of pie in the sky, but I like to talk about it because it generates clicks. It gets people excited. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a click whore. I admit it. Um, but if they don't trade for Renfro or sign Renfro, what? Oh, my, I'm, fro- I'm not, that frozen face for me is just top notch. Um, how concerned will you be? If they don't make a move at receiver. There's still time. Like, there's still time to do that. You've still got, you've still got training camp. you still got preseason. I mean. We're making it rain. Somebody is going, the Saints will get somebody. If it's, needed. The question is, the question is, is it going to be somebody with, Excuse me. Is it going to be somebody that has the skills of a DeAndre Hopkins or a Hunter Renfro? So that's that becomes more the question. And the answer is, if they if they if they can't get something done here, then by the time that they would get another body to compete for a spot, it, it's unlikely that they're going to get somebody that has 
the the pedigree or the resume. Well, it's hard because of, you don't know of DeAndre Hopkins. Well, you don't know because you, Arizona is clearly tankapalooza. Like they yeah. are full. They are full on. We're going to tank. We're going to pick number one. Te- hopefully, the Texans will be horrible. We'll have two top five picks next year. They are in full on tank mode. So I don't know what other team would be willing to do that in August. But here's my question, and then we're going to get to uh, the mailbag and uh, trivia, maybe. But right now, what, Thomas, what's the date today? Is it May 29th or it's May 30th? 30th. <laughs> on May 30th. In on May 30th. 31st. <laughs> on, on, May, on May 30th, what, what concerns you more? Saints wide receiver situation or the offensive line situation? I'm pulling up the depth chart now. Because because I look at the offensive line and I see offensive line. Offensive line. Offensive line. Yeah. Yeah. So I say what you were gonna to, say. To me, to me, it's offensive line hands down because Pete is always hurt. Ram check is hurt, but he plays, they manage it. Besides 2021, Ramchek starts every week. He doesn't practice during the week. They manage it. He's got a de- degenerative knee, but it's fine, and he'll probably be fine until the knee blows up. When will that be? Who knows? Um, but you got Andres Pete, always hurt. Cesar Ruiz, coming off Liz Frank. Trevor Penning, coming off Liz Frank. James Hurst, older, one year left on his deal, right? McCoy. Had thigh had injuries each of the last two years, and we know we know that if Derek Carr is going to be successful, he needs a good offensive line. And I just look at wide receiver and I see trade for Renfro, maybe add a veteran in August. Add a guy, if the, if the offense isn't quite going like you want, add a guy at the deadline, right? The offensive line, if it's not healthy and good, Kevin, I really think no matter what else they do, they're probably going to be again in a seven to eight win team. Like, I think the offensive line is that critical, whether it's health whether it's Salvadori stepping up, whatever you want to, whatever you want to make it out to be, it's got to be, it's got to be better than it was last year, and it's surely got to be better than it was the year before with health. Well, you got it. First of all, Trevor Penning has to play. Like, that's right. like, like, like we have to see him in actual regular season game competition. Uh, Pete, you know, Pete's going to be Pete. Ruiz is going to be like. Saldaveri is uh, Saldaveri is probably going to get called in during the season. Like that's going over to happen. Over under four and a half starts to... for Saldaveri. Over under two and a half starts. I'll take the over on that. Mm-hmm. I'll take the over yeah. on that. Yeah, Jason Champagne O line is critical, but I see them having necessary depth to get by. Yeah, Jason, I think they can. I think they can withstand the annual Pete injury. And I think they could maybe one more. Like if Pete was hurt and Penning is either hurt or not up to speed and you got to play Hurst, I think you can survive that. The trouble happens if you get a third injury. I just don't think they have it enough. And the history tells us, Kevin, I can argue besides the no call, the thing that's kept the Saints out of the, getting into a second Super Bowl was the offensive line was always hurt. Yeah. You know, it was always either guys were hurt and, and, and not playing at all, or it's like Pete in 2018, he's playing with a broken wrist in the NFC Championship or a broken hand in the NFC Championship and so on and so forth. So it's just one of those things. I worry about the offensive line because saying they're going to be healthy, you're going against years and years of that not happening. It isn't like yeah. it isn't like you're saying, well, they had injuries. You know, Lattimore has been basically healthy a lot mostly his career. And he was hurt last year, but he'll get back on track. It'll be fine. That's a fair thing to say. 
But like the offensive line since 2018, it's been hurt all the goddamn time. And, you know, we want to be, po- I want to be positive in May. Um, and I just, I just look at receiver and I see an easier path to success than the offensive line. And, and right now, I'm as worried about the offensive line as I was about safety last year. And I'm right, like, 9,100 hey. bits. We're at 9,100. We need 900 little bits. So that's $9. And that's, that's like four. It's like four Polish sausages. We've got a freeway but, tie for the MVP, by the way. Andrew's dad, Jason Champagne, and Chad M. Uh, each with 1,500 bits. Damn. Thank you, gentlemen. So, but, Kevin, last year's safety, the Saints had to replace 2,000 snaps. Malcolm Jenkins and Marcus Williams. And they got Honey Badger and they got Marcus May. And we said, listen, it's going to be, it'll probably be okay. But Marcus May had, was coming off um, an Achilles, I believe. And Honey Badger was a little bit older, and he had the the he had a lot of, he had a rough off season. He missed time, came yeah. to camp late, and we were worried about it. And listen, the Saints eventually it, it, it was okay. Like the back half of the year, it was okay, but it was kind of too late. And I just worry about uh, offensive line, like because D- Derek Carr is a guy. Like most quarterbacks, he doesn't, he struggles with pressure. And the thing is, elite quarterbacks struggle with pressure. Quarterbacks with Derek Carr, where he's like at his best, he's probably like the ninth best quarterback. And at his worst, he's probably like the 20th. Like pressure and the things around him really affect how he's going to be. You know, we're like elite top guys, like Drew Brees, offensive line problem, ah, whatever. I got to throw to Tommy Lee Lewis, eh, whatever. I got to throw to Austin Carr, whatever. I'll make it work. But Derek Carr needs all these things around him. And I think the main thing is the offensive line. Um, So if I told you one guy on the offensive line, one guy, pristine health the entire year, who would you pick? One guy on the offensive line? One offensive line. You can give him pristine health. I'm going to say either it, okay. Either Pete or Penning. Oh, that's Pete, a good be, answer. Because Penning, it's like, we don't know, like, we don't know what, what he's got, what, what, what we have with him. Yeah. I want to see a full season of him healthy. Conversely, we've had Pete already and pete can play pete can play well enough when he's healthy i I think pete i think pete is the guy because i wish juge was here maybe he'll pop into the chat he's he's somewhere flying home oh dude he's he's bougieing it up he ain't gonna be here so but but his point with andres pete is andres pete when he's healthy he's great in the run game moves body and say what you want about him he's made the pro bowl now i know the pro bowl isn't what it was and all that but when when andres pete is healthy he's an above average to good maybe very good guard the problem with pete is he's not like Ramcheck. he's not like armstead when he is injured if he tries to play more than more often than not he's a disaster because his yeah. technique isn't great, and he relies on his physicality, his strength, and that sort of thing. So when he's injured, he's got an injured pack or whatever. He just he falls off a cliff. So if you told me I could get 17 games out of Pete, I think I would take it, and I would roll the dice that Ramchek would be okay, that McCoy would be okay. I would roll the dice other places, but Pete is that one guy that we all know he's a sandcastle and he's going to get washed away. But if you could give me just one great season before he walks out the door, I think, I think it would be, uh, I think it would be Pete. People are egging on Andrew's dad in the chat to, 
to get us over the line so I can drink the, so I can drink the foul. I mean, we're at 9,700. I mean, this is a hell of a turnaround from it's the last time. Turnaround. It was just me and you doing the main, last time. The main and, show. And, and if you people, if you want to know why Thomas is just the best, he's the best producer in the business, the best in the world. He gives us a pep talk before the show. He's like, guys. I do? Don't be negative. Don't say Juge and Dave on here. Be positive. Get people excited. Get Ralph so we can drink this horribleness. Be passionate about it. And he, he gave us a little pep talk. It was like it was he was as he was as incredible as Al Pacino on any given Sunday. That's how motivated <laughs> I want to do this shit. show today. I'm casting is a game of inches. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere you look, go to the inches. Buick, man. Go to the Buick. <laughs> hmm. And Chad says, "Don't let mock Dave do a mock draft." So, uh, Thomas, as we wait for uh, the the bits to get over the line, and we get this last three hundred. Uh, I want to remind people, pay Amazon Prime members. You can sub for free every month with Prime. It's not just something you do once. You can do it every month. Support us with Prime through Twitch. doesn't cost you any, anything. It's a great way to support the show. Um, and it counts towards the goal. And, make you and it well counts done. towards the goal. Exactly. Exactly. So for Thomas, free. For free. We're 300 away. Thomas, play it. Play. Uh, actually, we we'll do trivia and then we'll do questions. What's the trivia? Yeah. Okay. Trivia by uh, Badrich. Amazing question. I don't think you're gonna get it, but you can try oh. to. Okay. The trivia question is: Who was the first Saints head coach to sweep the Falcons in a? Two game series. Ooh, that's a good one. So I would think, Kevin, that the Saints would have to be pretty good. And I know when they were decent at the end of the 70s, like Atlanta beat them twice in one year on a Hail Mary and a pass interference penalty on a Hail Mary. They had Big Ben, son of Big Ben. I think that was 1979. Um, 1978, they didn't beat the, the Atlanta beat them on like the Saints screwed up a punt. So I'm trying like and it, it, Thomas is the silhouette tip because that kind of looks like Jim Mora with the visor. But that's not I Jim. Mean, that can't be Jim Mora's hair. Is it? Is it? Is it Tom? Did because the Falcons were bad too in the '60s. Yeah, that's, it's so not yeah, the visor. It, that's the hint. It's not the visor, man. So is it it's Tom? A, it's a hat. So, because you got you got like Tom Fears, J.D. Roberts, John North, Hank Schramm. Like those there's are your no coaches. way. There's no way it was Hank Schramm. Yeah, because Hank Hank Schramm. Schramm only sorry, Hank, Hank Schramm only coached like half it. Man, that's a. <clears throat> it can't be. It wouldn't be bum. It can't be bum Phillips. Oh, it might be. It might be. It might be that. I'm gonna say bum. I, that's my answer. I'm gonna say bum Phillips. I'm gonna say bum Phillips. What's your final? Who's the first Saints head coach to sweep the Falcons in a two game series? Right. Mora did it, right? Mora did it, but that's too obvious an answer, I think. So if then who like was the coach? It. Who were the coaches before? Who were the two before Mora? You had Bum Phillips and um, Dick Nolan. And you had Ernie Heflin, I think was his name. He was the interim coach when they went 1-15. and 15. Um, Yeah. I mean... So... I'm, I'm inclined to I'm inclined to say Mora. I think it took him a long ass time to get to the, to get the two to sweep to get in the season sweep. So you'll say Mora. That is f***ing stupid. Mora. Wake up. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Er, Jason Champagne said it's Ernie Hefferlin. 
That's Hefferly. That's the guy I was thinking of. So Thomas, who, who is it? Hit it. Tell us who it is. All right. Let's see. So was the final final answer, Ralph? Bum Phillips is my final answer. Okay. It's John North. Whew. I mean, I said his name, but they were so... Pull up the 1974. JC Champagne was right in the chat. That was one of his guesses, by the way. He was the only one. 1974. I told, you, told you it was a hot, hot trivia, man. They were five and nine. And two of the, <laughs> two of the wins were... Two of the wins were Atlanta. Wow. The Atlanta Falcons oh. that year, 3-11. and 11. The Saints beat them 14-13 in week three. And 13-3 uh, in week six. It was the Saints' first two wins of the year. <laughs> <laughs> the Saints, the Saints had, a, had a grand total of uh, 196 yards of offense in the first win. And in the second win, oh, the second win, they had 321. They ran for two, they ran for 232 yards, but turned the ball over four times. That is uh, so 1970 Saints. Um, all right, Thomas, hit take it to the top. Uh, wait, before that, uh, Chad M and Akmich had the same idea basically at the same time and both got us over the top, Ralph. So, you, all know, right. you, you know what time it is. Chad M, I think you are the one to choose the bottle. I don't know if you are going to take the Kevin's uh, advice. advice. And Kevin wants to save the Underberg for when Dave and Andrew are here. So we have the Underberg or the Kummerling. Um, I'm scared of both of these. I am not going to lie. You should and, be, man. Um, That's the idea. This, the Caesar salad that I had earlier might just come right back up. I'm, Jesus. I'm, I am really scared. If I vomit all over this computer and ruin it, Thomas, you don't get paid because I'm going to have to buy a new computer next month. And I, I'll blame you just so you know. Chad M so, said, uh, let, let Kevin pick it. Kevin, what do you want? What do you say? Kevin, so you... I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I think it is better. It's better for the, for the, for the podcasting brand <laughs> if Dave and Juge are here when you have to drink that other one. Because that will be a better... That'll be better audio, better video. Yeah. So I say drink the Coomerling. Is it Coomerling or Coonerling? Coomerling. Coomerling. Drink the Coomerling. All right. Drink the Coomerling. Chad, thank you for deferring. You'll receive the ball at the start of the second half. Oh, my God. What's it it's, smell like? It smells like... like it kind of smells like... Like a little bit like Jägermeister, but... Like with cleaning supplies mixed in. All right. It, it's, it's not old because it's fresh because it's sealed and, 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 and Nikolai sent it to me. So it's not like my wife's stuff where it's old. So you know it's fresh, but it. it fresh, fresh cleaning supplies. Fresh cleaning supplies. All right, like, down the hatch. Is this, is, is this what German women used to murder their husbands? I just. I'm, sc I'm scared of See, this. See, that's a better joke. I'm, I'm I'm really scared of this. Like, what's the German what's the German word for Dateline? <laughs> oh, that was fast. Oh god! Oh oh god! Oh <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Oh 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 oh! I hate you, Nikolai. I hate you. Oh my god! There's a there's a burning in my chest, and it feels like my body is rejecting it. Oh, Don't God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want you to pause and screen grab all of those faces oh that Ralph God. was making because it looked like he was getting something oh. under the table. <laughs> oh, God. Oh my god. 
That he got that dog. Don't get him. Oh my that god. Dog, that, that dog is that dog is run loose. It Oh my god. People drink this on purpose? Oh my god. It makes it makes Jaeger seem like a good idea. Like, oh my god, like I Welcome I'm, to Uganda. I've drank a lot of stuff in my time. Kevin, I've never had like a like a feeling of like like it just like my stomach, it isn't so much turning as I feel like it's gonna my entire innards are gonna pop out of my mouth. Like this this is horrible. Like two of these, two of these would either kill me. Or I would get to my ideal playing weight. <laughs> Jesus. Jason says we need to keep Ralph alive. Who else will supply the jokes? Um, right. Well, we need you to host the show. I like like right. Juge is Juge is not around nearly enough. Him and Dave are trying to out bouge one another with their vacations. And God knows I can't be trusted to run this thing. Jesus, Ralph, don't die on us, man. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm Commander Riker at best. Dude, it came back up and I had to push it back down. Oh, fuck. That is horrible. <laughs> Dude, only Butterich says clip. Yeah, if, we, if, if, we, if people would do the clip of the week like they used to, Tom, that would be a winner. Ralph was it the <laughs> the worst one of the ones you drank? By far. You drank. But this this Damn. one worse this than the one milk. It, worse than the milk, because the the milk was the milk was bad going down. But like once I got over it and I just like chased it with a little beer, like everything like calmed down. Like this is not calming down. This is like raging. Like we need to get this thing moving so like I can yeah. either like so I can either get to the bathroom and throw up or get to the bathroom and take it down. Like I don't I I don't know what this has done to my inside. So Thomas, hit the take it to the top. <laughs> Andrew's dad says Ralph is almost gonna vomit. I may be or poop my pants, Mr. Juge. Who knows? 50-50. Finger guns. <laughs> you ever, Kevin, you ever have like stomach issues that are so bad that like when you move around, you feel like something really bad is going to happen? Yeah. That's where I am. Yeah, I was having that, I think, last week. <laughs> oh. Thomas, what you got for us? I'm going to blow my nose. I'm not even going to mute because I'm scared. All right, so many amazing questions. We did the mailbag last week. Who knows? Maybe we'll do one uh, this week too. Uh, mailbag first question. Ma Go ahead. First question from Octoberisk, who was in the chat uh, earlier tonight. Uh, what is your favorite Saint Tr uh, Saint Dunk on the Falcons moment? Ooh, that's a good. I mean, Jimmy Graham literally dunked on them. That was my um, first thought. Um, I like I, I like Drew doing the spin cycle. The spin cycle. Is, give me give me Breeze doing the spin cycle and going in for the touchdown. That's a good one. Didn't they celebrate on the field Monday night in like 20, 20, 20 either not twenty in twenty ten? Like Jimmy Graham scored a touchdown and they like celebrated on the field after and that pissed off Atlanta. Uh. Didn't Peyton give him the choke sign? That was fun, um, but I, I think you're, I think, I think you're right. Like the the Drew Brees spin cycle is so great because it's in gift form. It was a fun season, and uh, Saints. Oh, Andrew's Ju Andrew Andrew Juge's dad has a great one. Peyton Turner blocked field goal from last year. That's got. I mean. That's got to be up there, like the, the Falcons falconing fully against the Saints. It's strong. That's fucking illegal. 
That could be a mini. Thomas, file this one away. That could be a mini bracket. <laughs> uh, what's next, Thomas? All right, next question. Uh, next question from Don Checo. And he asks You can only have one. Would you rather the Saints make the Super Bowl this year in Vegas or have a strong year but make it next year in the Dome? Oh, that's a good question. Good question. So, so it's a guarantee. So you're telling me I have a guarantee either way. Yeah, guarantee. But you only get one. They make it, and but the, so the guarantee is they make it to the game. Like they just they make, make it to the Super Bowl. They make it to that's the game. It. Yeah. I mean, if you're giving me the option of they have a strong year but make it next year in the dome. Ah, uh, see, you, you know what just you know what just is in the back of my head right here. What's that? Oh, they have a strong year, which means Dennis Allen is definitely staying for year three. That's right. But they are making it to the Super Bowl. However, what if Dennis Allen does some of that fourth down weak sauce that he was doing this past year, and somehow that cost the team? But you know what? I'm overthinking it. Over I'm overthinking it. it. Let's say have the strong year this year, have them make it to the Super Bowl next year in uh in 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 New Orleans. I I yeah, Super, I Bowl, mean, Super Bowl in the Superdome. I mean making it in Vegas would be hilarious cuz you just get to dunk all over the Raiders. It's in their stadium. And the Saints have their quarterback, who they didn't want, uh, and Mark Davis in his bald head, instead of having terrible hair, he has to sit in his box watching a quarterback that his terrible coach didn't want lead the Saints on the field in the Super Bowl, which should be, it should be like the Raiders' crowning moment. They're hosting the Super Bowl in Vegas, and no, everybody's making fun of them. So that would be great. But the Super Bowl in New Orleans with the Saints would just be... I mean, I, Kevin, I don't even know. My mind almost can't even process it. And it wouldn't even they matter. Would shut the, city down. the city would be shut down. I don't even know that it would matter. Like, I don't think it necessarily the, the, the stadium would be full of Saints fans, although I think Saints fans would go crazy and pay any price to get in. So it would be more Saints fan than other team. But it wouldn't be, I don't necessarily think it would be like, a home game for the Saints? No. But the, oh, no, no, but oh, no, no, no. The, the Super Bowl is so, it's so corporate. corporatized and everything that you, I, I don't think you can ever really get like a home field advantage, so to speak. I'm just saying the atmosphere in the city would yeah, be off the, off, uh, off the chain. It would be insane. There would be, you would have giant watch parties around the building. The Superdome would be surrounded by a sea of humanity. Humanity. Watching, watching the game. And, and the thing that would set it apart, Kevin, I think, would be, um, is normally, right, you, you, teams, they win the Super Bowl, you have Championship Sunday, and you have the off week. And... Yeah, it's the Super Bowl, and it's still a huge news story, but it kind of calms down, right? They have the off week, and I think the NBA All-Star game is like that Sunday of the off week, and they have the Pro Bowl, right? And it kind of calms down. Dude, if the Saints make the Super Bowl in New Orleans, it's just nonstop insanity for two solid weeks because the night they go to the Super Bowl, we party and shut down the quarter, right? The next right. week... The next weekend, the off weekend, we're shutting down the quarter again. We're probably partying all week. And then start a Super Bowl week, it's just nonstop partying again. I mean, when the Saints went to Miami, Saints fans just took over Miami. I knew probably three dozen people that went to the Super Bowl, not including Dave, that just were like, I don't have tickets. I'm just going because the Saints might never be going to the Super Bowl again. I'm going to Miami. I have to be a part of it. I just think it would be... I think it would be Bedlam, and although it's tempting to pick the Vegas Super Bowl because it's this year, it's right now, and it'd be a great time to make fun of the Raiders. Um, the as a Saints fan, I think 
you have a little bit better chance, me personally, of like getting a ticket in New Orleans. Where like Vegas, freaking forget about it. Like the tickets to the Vegas Super Bowl, it's going to be ridiculous. Like just forget about it. So I, I pick New Orleans as well. Thomas, what's next? Okay, next question. Uh, from Saints this is Travis. So bad. <laughs> this is so bad you touched the mic, I think. You touched the cable, Ralph. Yeah. <clears throat> while, you, while you fix it, I will, I will read the question from Saints Rabbit. If you could bring back one locker room poison player from the Saints <laughs> past, Sans the Poison. Who would you choose? Well, that's a good question. Like, Boy, that's like a, a, I mean, dude, that's rats. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's just that's gold, golden, man. No, man, that's just like rife for problems because it's like you're saying, you're saying, pick you're a. Be a model citizen. Yeah, pick, well, no, but it's like you're for saying, pick a terrible, pick a horrible human being that Dang. we know is a horrible human being, and then try and conceptualize. Them not, not having terrible. done the horrible stuff. I mean, I think. I mean, the thing is with like with like he who shall not be named the safety from two thousand nine. Like his stuff is so terrible, I can't even conceptualize. Right, him. but it was right. locker room. But it was locker room, right? That's right. So I can't. Junior Gallette was normal until he got paid or pretty normal normal-ish um you know who could who would be an interesting one kevin albert connell saints need a receiver <laughs> they need a receiver if he just yeah. wouldn't steal money out of teammates lockers they need a receiver he'd be a good receiver that's a possibility um this is a great question uh cd dude tara reek says brandon browner uh, but Brandon Brown wasn't good. Like he wasn't good. Like even if he's not like a ter- even if he wasn't one to beat up media members, uh, he wasn't any good. Mm. So I'm trying to think. Andre Royal for the Saints. He he was a linebacker. He wasn't any good. Um. Uh, Reggie allegedly, Sutton, Bra- not- Brandon Cooks allegedly. Brandon Cooks. Uh, Jason Champagne has a good one. I'll bring up one out of left field. Reggie Sutton, uh, he was on the Mora teams in 86, 87, and 88, I think. He's a good one. If he would have not done cocaine, he would have been a really good corner, and he was really good at blocking kicks. Um, if he, that's why he, he did, was good at it, because he was doing cocaine. But he did, a, but he did a lot of cocaine. And by the way, by the way, Thomas, can I can I tell the people the the bracket or do we need to save that? I think you can. Why not? We are doing the the bracket this year is the dumbest saint ever. And let me just say cocaine is prominently involved in like three of them. We love cocaine. Yeah. Uh, only for we, the bracket, I mean. <laughs> only for, the for the bracket, bracket. only. What what's next, Thomas? Okay, final question of the show. Also by Saints Rabbit, he asks us like five questions, I think. Shout out to him. Uh, if you knew Carr is about to have a 5,000 yard season, what would you all prote- project the floor to be for 2023? The floor? The yeah. floor. Let's see, 5,000 yards? Fl- the floor is... What do you think? Nine wins or ten? See, if you tell me... Yeah, go ahead. If you tell me Carr is throwing for 5,000 yards, I'm not as excited as you probably think. Yes. I'm thinking he's throwing for 5,000 yards. That's not what Dennis Allen wants. So... I'm thinking the floor is probably like seven and the ceiling is probably like nine. Because if he's throwing for 5,000 yards. The that means we're trailing. The, it means they're trailing. It means something has gone really, really 
really wrong on defense. Because when Drew Brees was thrown for 5,000 yards, even in the record set in year of 2011, the defense wasn't really that good. So I would be, I would be concerned. Andrew's dad says 11 and 6, final answer. I would say the floor is 7 and 10, the ceiling is 10 and 7. I don't, you want Derek Carr, Kevin? What's the sweet spot for you for Derek Carr this year? Let's see, 4,000 comes out, uh, comes to mind. Let me pull up his number. Yeah. Uh, I think the sweet spot is like 4,200 and like 33, 34 touchdowns and like less Jesus. than 12 picks. Boy, I tell you what, he threw for 4,800 yards in 2021 with Vegas, with uh, the Raiders. Their defense, so let me... their defense was horrific, though. And he was like, he was, he was making magic in fourth quarters for them. So like, 2021, so magic. what they finish at, they got, they one, got 10 and two, seven. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 10 and 7 in 2021. No, hang on. Yeah, 10 and 7 in 2021. Well, that's wild that we're now in year three of that. Um, 4,800 yards, though. God. That's a lot of yards. I mean, their defense I, was booty. I think this, look, I, I'm, I, okay, looking at that, I'll say that the floor is 10 wins if he throws 5,000. I'm more concerned with the number of touchdowns he throws instead. Yeah. But what, would, what, what was your question? Like, what is the sweet spot number? What's I would say point? I will go with, and let me look at his other numbers here. Sorry about that. He's I thrown over 4,000. He threw over 4,000 four years in a row and then, and then uh, slipped back to 3,500. Uh, but he still threw for 24 and 14. Yeah. Boy, the funny thing is he threw for 4,800 yards and he was 23 and 14. And he threw for... He had a better touchdown to interception ratio in 2019 and 2020. So give me something like 42, 4,300 yards. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah, I think, I think you want like 4,200 yards and like 30-plus touchdowns and like less than If he points. hits 30-plus, that would be a career best for him. That's right. No, I'm sorry. He, he would have to get over 32. His career best is 32, uh, and that was in 2015, and he threw for th nearly 4,000 yards. I mean, the only way I could see the 5,000 yards being like the Saints being incredible is like if some kind of way every single thing on offense came together and Pete Carmichael is or orchestrating the Death Star offense and they're just murdering teams and he's putting up numbers and they're just because they're just they're absolutely murdering teams. And it's like the 2011 Saints all over again. But I don't right. see it. I think you're right, Kevin. I think that the sweet spot's like 42. You want the Saints to have – I think you want them to have a little bit of balance on offense. So um, <clears throat> that's it. Thank – Thomas, uh, great mailbag tonight, by the way. People the, – the, the questions tonight were just top-notch. Yeah. And if I die in my sleep because of the Coomerling, I love each and every one of you. Because um, of Nikolai. So, so give us the final MVP tally. Give us the roll call of everyone who donated and give us uh, everything because it, it was a great night. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who donated. Yeah, crazy night. I don't think we had uh, that many separate donators during any show, Ele 11 of them. So uh, and the MVP is Chad M for the first time ever, I think, with 2,400 bits. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Coom Coomerling. Second, second place, Andrew's dad. Also, thanks to Jason Champagne, Hatchet John, AJ Rochelle, Who Saints, CEJD, Huda Golfer, Budrich, <laughs> Romeo, Arkmich, and uh, and last minute to it, Twitch Prime for the wits. Thanks, man. So 12 thanks separate you. donators. Thank you, guys. Great. Jerry said a great show, guys. Thanks for. Thanks for hanging out with us. And I just want to remind people, like, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting St. Happy Hour. 
Go to saintshappyhour.com, become a patron, and support the show if you don't. We're doing great things here. I love this community. It's going to be an amazing 2023, guys. You want to be a part of it. We can't do it without you guys' support. Kevin, I'm not thanking Dave. I'm not thanking uh, Andrew. Uh, But I will thank you, Kevin, and I will thank Thomas, best producer on earth, running the show back in Poland. I will not thank Nikolai. Nikolai, you have done something drastically terrible terrible to my intestines and i hate you uh but to the rest of you we love you thanks for supporting the show uh remember kids if you're going to support a saints podcast you ought to support the one that wins awards and until next time the bar is closed <laughs>